Welcome to VC Circle, the classroom show. I'm Zerk Sasantya and I'm back to talk about valuation. Now, first thing I want to talk about is what is the DCF method of valuation or the discounted cash flow method of valuation. This is a method by which an assayer looks at not just the past profits of a company, but the future profitability of a company over a predefined time frame. It could be one year, it could be two years, it could even stretch up to 20 years. What also should be remembered is the government of India has prescribed the DCF valuation method for use when you have any transactions between a resident or a non-resident in the shares of an unlisted Indian company. Let's look at a scenario in which our dashing investor X is looking to acquire Better Burgers Private Limited. But he's not exactly sure how much he should pay to buy this food chain because while the business is small, it's growing very fast. Considering inflation and other such factors, he calculates a discount rate of 15% and using the DCF formula, applies it to the past and future projected cash flow numbers. In 2010, when Better Burgers was still in debt, the cash flows were in the negative and hence the value of the company was also in the negative. But in 2012, when the food chain broke even and started making profits, the company's value increased to 4.5 lakhs. Considering the company's growth rate, future cash flow projections are also inputted, giving us the value of the company even two years in the future in 2015. By adding the values of the company from its inception in 2010 to what it could be valued in 2015, Investor X realizes that the maximum payable price for Better Burgers does not exceed a valuation of 25.5 lakhs. This method of valuation can be very useful where a company has a small capital base but still remains intrinsically profitable. And as I said, this is the method which is prescribed by the government of India when dealing with transactions between a resident and a non-resident in the shares of an Indian company which are not listed. Now valuation is not a static concept. Just about all actions that are undertaken by an entity could have an effect on valuation. For example, if a company decided to sell off part of its assets, again the valuation of the company would have changed. If the company had taken a loan, again the valuation of the company will change because of the interest cost that it now has to bear. If the company takes an equity infusion, there is also going to be an impact on the valuation of the company. And I'd like to talk a little bit more about that, especially when we look at it from a DCF method or discounted cash flow method of valuation. If a company takes in funds from a subscriber and uses those funds, for example, to buy additional plant and machinery to expand its business and operations. In such an event, yes, simply put, the company has increased its capital base. But at the same time, if it's bought plant and machinery, that plant and machinery can be used by the company in its business and operations to generate future profit. And therefore, as per the DCF valuation for a company, there will be a substantial change in valuation, which I'd just like to show you. Now, if you see from this example, we are talking about Company Y. Now, Company Y has taken in funds from a shareholder for the purposes of increasing its working capital and to sub step up production. This would lead to, let's say, an increased revenue for the Company Y of about 3,000 rupees in a year. If you see in year one, with the extra 3,000 rupees cash flow, if you apply the 15% discount, what would happen is the present value of the company in year one would be 2610 rupees. Let's jump ahead now to year number three. Again, we're applying the same discount of 15%. And as you can see, the present value of the company at the end of year three would be 1974 rupees. Let's now jump all the way to year five. In year five, Again, as you can see, the company has enjoyed an extra cash flow of 3,000 rupees. And the present value of the company is 1,491 rupees. Now, what we would do is aggregate the present value from year zero all the way up to year five, and we reach a figure of 10,059 rupees. Therefore, 
using the DCF method of valuation, company Y has actually increased its valuation by 10,059 rupees. Let's now take an example where company Y had a loan. Now, the loan that company Y actually had was of a nominal amount of 1 lakh rupees and this loan carried interest say at 12%. If company Y repays that loan straight away, it will enjoy an additional cash flow of 12,000 rupees which otherwise would have gone to pay for the interest on the loan. As you can see in year 1, with the extra 12,000 rupees, the present value of the company would have been increased by 10,444. If we look at year number four, again, having enjoyed the 12,000 rupees over here, in year four, the present value of the company would be 6,864. In year five, the present value would be 5,964. Now, when we aggregate all of these present values to arrive at the DCF value for the five-year horizon, what we will find is the value of the company has increased by 40,236, all by just repaying that 1 lakh rupee loan. In addition, valuation can change due to external factors. For example, if there was a recession, such as in 2008, where worldwide there was a shortage of liquidity, Obviously, that meant that valuations would drop. You can also have a change in valuation by extra competition. For example, in the mobile phone industry, when mobile phones first came into India, everyone can remember the sky high rates per minute. And now it is cheaper to use a cell phone than a landline to make or receive a call. In conclusion, therefore, what can we really come to? What we can say is that valuation is definitely something that is absolutely necessary to be done because without it we would not know the true worth of an item. We can also say that there are several different methods of valuation that can be followed. Some, for example, the DCF valuation method is in fact a method that we are required to follow under current Government of India foreign exchange control guidelines. There are other methods that can be used with it in situations when nothing is prescribed. However, what would always have to be factored in is what is the purpose for the valuation? Why am I doing this? Remember, valuation is an art. It is not an exact science. Well, I hope I managed to explain what exactly is the discounted cash flow method of valuation. And I also managed to explain how changes in valuation can occur in a company from, from actions such as simply repaying a loan. This is Zerxa Santia for VC Circle signing off. Thank you.